from e-commerce, new developments and products to gadgets and games, and for everyone interested in the internet and new media. Now on BBC News, all the tech to revolutionise business and personal life. It's clear. This week, Nick looks at Meta's latest project to help people make sense of the horrors of the past. This is more than bringing back a dead person. This way, you can make that person give them a thousand years of life. I have to say, of all the giant LED screens I've seen in my time, this one's right up there. I mean, it's literally right up there. Well, yes, and it seems like it goes on and on and on. Yeah. And it also makes you feel rather dizzy looking at it. <laughs> This is Outernet, the largest digital exhibition space in Europe. Here, an array of artist work is displayed in its full panoramic glory. Aside from the huge cube that spun Lara out, you were OK in the end, weren't you? I was. Good. Uh, there are a few other spaces dotted around too, which are used to showcase specific exhibits. This room celebrates the role that women from all backgrounds have played in shaping the creative industries. And it's just one example of immersive technology bringing us closer to the events of today and the past. But some events are hard to face, even though it's important to do so. And one of the most important is the Holocaust. It's now been many decades since its horrors took place. And as time goes on, fewer survivors are around to be able to tell their stories. For a while now, researchers have been documenting them digitally so their legacy can live on for future generations. And of course, there are now new ways to breathe new life into those memories. And Nick Quek has been to Meta in Berlin to find out more. A stone's throw from the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe, I've come to Meta's offices to try its latest extended reality project. I'm the first journalist from outside Germany to see the new interactive Holocaust education tool. Tell Me Inge takes users on an audiovisual journey into the memories of Inge Auerbacher, a survivor of the Nazi regime. You ask Inge questions by simply talking, and the artificially intelligent system will play out her response. Tell me about the terrible journey. One morning, when I was seven... It's her real recorded answer, not a digitally doctored version. Oh, Inga's showing me something. She's opened up a box. But it's presented to you like you're inside a video game, a moving storybook with your environment changing around you as Inga recounts more anecdotes and details from her past. That's pretty cool. So she's opened a book and then we can see floating up over her right hand shoulder the book. It's a joint project with Hollywood startup Storyfile, which is now moving beyond computer screens and is stepping into uncharted virtual territory. It's a little bit tense in this space, I have to say. It feels um, a bit eerie. I, f I feel quite uh, nervous about it all. My hands are sweating um, a bit, but it also is great to kind of see um, her stories come to life in this way. It makes you focus more on what she's saying. In a strange way, you're almost being entertained. The experience was made in partnership with UNESCO, Claims Conference and World Jewish Congress. You can take the story wherever you want to take the story. You can ask for in whatever order you want to ask. I mean, you can't really ask for something more engaging at this point than that. Uh, you know, we used to sit in, you know, in memorial museums and kind of read the text and be told some of the stories behind them. But this is a completely different level. There are two Nazi guards at the gate. So far away, there was absolutely almost no chance to get out. It's really sad. Oh. Is there a fine line, though, when it comes to designing an experience where you want to make it engaging, but maybe not too immersive? You shouldn't overwhelm someone emotionally. And I think especially because um, of this, we decided to use 3D animations. It makes things real, but it's not realistic. Uh, and so you get a sense of what was going on, and of course you hear um, from Inge first hand, but still, you know, there's some sort of a distance because it's not like that you see real soldiers, not like, like you see real people getting hurt, and so on and so on. Um, 
but you understand how the scenery was looking like. I've been working on genocide and Holocaust commemoration issues for many years. These topics are not easy. Um, the immersive part of it really, you know, makes you also feel like you're part of the life of the people. And singing, seeing Inga where she is today and seeing that there is a life for survivors and how she made a life for herself and how strong she is, is also part of, you know, the positive part of experiencing this. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to meet you. Have you got to try the experience yourself? Have you seen what you look like? Yeah. In virtual reality? Yeah, I look, yes. I look pretty good. I was satisfied. <laughs> when you read a book, sometimes you would like to speak to that person in the book to converse with that person, but you can't. You have to continue reading. And I think this way, this new method, gives you this insight. Unfortunately, you can't ask Inga any old question. It has to be in some way connected to answers that she originally recorded. But what's really clever here is how the application expands once you get to know Inga more. <laughs> Her granddad's just popped up there. As your curiosity peaks and you come back to Inga after the first story has been told, you find there's an, a sequel to that, some follow-up that you can then ask about, which then takes you on this journey and these branches through her life. And that's how we structured this, not as a linear storytelling, we're not watching a movie. We are actually delving into her life and allowing, just as we would do in conversation, different aspects of that life to unfold as we talk to her. Right now, you can only hear from Inga in English and German, but down the line, Stephen says, using AI, she could be translated into various languages so everyone can access it. What was the experience like being in the studio, being asked all these questions? I don't know, I'm a talker. I don't mind answering anything, because when I'm gone, I'm gone. It's finished, history's gone. This is more than bringing back a dead person you know, because that's not possible. But this way, you can make that person give them a thousand years of life. I think that's wonderful.